Hi everyone! Today I am reviewing the Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy as a whole, and this review will not contain spoilers. I want to review it, that way if you haven't read it you can determine whether or not it is something you are interested in reading. And I will basically start off with the things I like and then kind of go from there. And I want to say I have read the trilogy as a whole three times. I've read the first book four times. I first read it in middle school, I read it again in high school, and then I read it again in February. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about what I really like about this trilogy. And the first thing I would say is the world building. I find the world building to be really interesting, particularly in terms of the settings. I absolutely love the settings. It's very unique compared to what we see in your usual fantasy. We're not getting medieval Europe. There is nothing here that is medieval Europe. The majority of it takes place in like deserty areas. So we start out in Oroval, I think is how you pronounce the first country that Elisa is from. And it gives me kind of a Mediterranean vibe almost, but it's got like some desert, but it gives me kind of like a Italian Mediterranean vibe almost. There's a lot of like Spanish vibes to it too, so maybe more Spanish Mediterranean, but that's kind of what I get from that one. It's not quite as deserty. We have a lot of like things that grow there, lots of plant life, and so it's not quite as harsh as where we get to later. And then when she travels, she goes through a rainforest, which again is not something you usually see. And then we get into the desert and the country Joya Darina, I think is how you pronounce it. And that one is all desert. And I love the desert, so that makes me really happy. I also sort of like the rainforest. I mean, I lived in the rainforest for a month, so I definitely don't hate it. The rainforest is just a lot scarier to me than the desert. So I like that there's a rainforest, that's cool, but I really like that there is a desert and we spend a lot of time in this desert and that is very different and I absolutely love that. And from that, I get a lot of like Hacienda vibes from the architecture and again, kind of like Spanish vibes just overall. And then the desert, I don't know, kind of just feels more Sahara-y to me than more than the deserts we have in like the American Southwest or whatever. It's a very barren desert. And then in the second book we get into this like tropical islandy setting and so again we've got like rainforests but we have islands and sea voyages and that's very different from your typical fantasy and then in the third book we go up into the mountains where it's cold and snowy and again very very different so I absolutely love the unique settings I really like the world building just in general especially with like the magic system because we have the godstone and then there's the whole religion behind that and i think the religion is based pretty heavily on christianity i myself am not very religious so i don't know a whole lot about it to be able to tell but i think that's what it's based off of and it all kind of makes sense like there are things about that religion that just kind of speak to religion in general and how it works and i like that there's all this lore behind the godstone and so I just really like that about it and then we have the war between the Invernos and the rest of the people and I like how we have kind of this dichotomy between the two groups of people where they're very different it's not a monoculture we see lots of differences between the Invernos and then the other people and then even between Orival and Joya Darina we're seeing cultural differences and so I really like that so overall I think the world building and in particular the settings is pretty well done and it's very unique for a fantasy and that makes me really happy Another thing that I like is just the overall plot. It's basically Elisa is trying to help end the war with the Invernos because it is really problematic for her country and that's basically what happens and so I really like that overall plot and then I like all the little subplots that are in there too and I like all the plot motions that we go through. There really aren't any points where I get super bored or anything. There's just a little bit of like travel loggy type stuff in the third book, but other than that, it's, I find, really engaging. 
There are a lot of funny parts throughout the trilogy. I found that it made me laugh quite a bit. A lot of times the characters would say something that's just really funny and so I really like that about it as well. And then my favorite thing I think overall besides the settings is the characters. There's just a really great cast of characters. We have a lot of female characters who are very capable and then we also have a lot of great male characters and a lot of times in YA there are these toxic characters who make their way into the story and I don't really see that with this book. I think all the characters really are not toxic and I like how all the romantic relationships are fairly healthy. There's one that I don't know that I would quite call it healthy, but the main one is very healthy and that makes me super happy. And I love that we have all these powerful female characters. Like, we have these women who rise to positions of power and I really just like seeing that where women are getting these positions of power that they normally don't get, especially in fantasy novels. Fantasy novels tend to be a little bit old-fashioned where it leans really heavily towards males. And I know with YA fantasy, we're really seeing a shift into female leads. And I really like that. And I like that they are gaining power. And this book was written like 10 years ago. So that's kind of earlier when these shifts were happening more. And so I really like seeing that. And then another thing that I've never really mentioned before, but I realized is pretty good in this trilogy is the character's agency. The characters don't really let people like boss them around or make decisions for them. You know, at first Elisa doesn't really make a whole lot of decisions on her own, but she does make some. And as we go over the course of the trilogy, she gains confidence and gains agency. And a lot of the other characters have a lot of agency too. And I really like that they're just actively making decisions for the story. and. I really like that. They're just actively trying to problem solve and not just sitting around waiting for someone to solve their problems for them. So I really like that as well. And then this one I know is a little bit controversial because I don't have personal experience with this, but there is some discussion of body image and a complicated relationship with food because Elisa is overweight. She eats a lot. And I like that this book is trying to bring light to a really sensitive subject and something that we don't really see in books. We don't see overweight characters in a lot of books. We don't see characters struggle with their body image unless, you know, they're that person who's really attractive and they think they're not. That's like the only time we really see that and I don't think that's quite what we need. We need someone who like actually isn't attractive and struggles with their body image and then also, you know, eating disorders. We don't really see that in books either. And so I like that she is trying to talk about these things. A lot of people who have experience with these things in their personal life say it's not done very well. And I can see why they would feel that way because it's not gone into in depth. It's just kind of touched upon. And so I could see how it is not discussed as much as it should be, especially for a deep first person point of view. I feel like there's more opportunity to really get into that and really focus more on it. And I think her journey with that is maybe a little bit unrealistic. And so I can see why people don't like it. But I like that there is an attempt because it's something we really don't see in fiction. And so I know it's not done horribly well, but I do like the fact that there was an attempt. So I would not say it is a great representation of this thing, but there was an attempt made and you know, that that's progress. I would like to see more with that. You know, if we could go back and edit this book now, I think there would be a lot of opportunity to fix that, but obviously we can't. So that's just my thought on that. I like that there was an attempt, but it didn't work out super fantastically. And so if you have struggled with body image or an eating disorder, I can understand why you would not like this book because it's not handled super well. So basically those are all my thoughts on the trilogy. I don't really have anything I don't like about the trilogy as a whole. And so it makes me wonder how much of that is just bias because I love this trilogy so much that I was unable to find weaknesses within it because I'm sure there are some. I'm sure there are lots because every book has weaknesses and I just don't know what they are because I did not notice them upon this most recent reread. And so when I read this, it 
almost felt like I was reading it for the first time because I hadn't read it in like four to five years and I didn't really remember the details. I remembered the grand scheme of things, the overall plot and everything, but I did not remember the details and so it kind of felt like I was reading it for the first time. And so I read through it really, really quickly. I think I read through the entire trilogy in like six days or less. So I'm debating about rereading it again this year and doing it more slowly and savoring it and taking my time and then seeing if I can pick out weaknesses now that I remember what happens with the story. We will see whether or not I have time for that, but if I do, I may redo these videos and talk more about the weaknesses if I can find them. So I might redo this trilogy on here at some point and see if I can find more weaknesses. But at this point, these are my thoughts on the trilogy and that's what I'm going to stick with for now. So that's all I have for you. I hope you all have a great day.